Hello, my name is Shelley Rugg. I'm the gallery coordinator here at Gallery Route 1. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to our Box Show Virtual Docent Talks. 2020 marks the 21st year for the Box Show, and it will be remembered as the virtual Box Show for many years to come. We are truly grateful to all the artists who donate their talents to make these delightful pieces for you to bid on so that we can raise money for Grove's exhibitions and outreach programming. We have invited some very special box show artists and collectors to talk about the boxes so we can get a good look at the artistry and imagination that went into each work of art. Okay, I'm Roger Jacobson. This is my wife, Helen Stanley, of almost a half century of marriage. <laughs> And we've taught together over the years and made art. Um, yeah. We both went to the Art Institute. Yeah. We got, we got credentials. <laughs> <laughs> Roger's is um, a steel sculptor and does 2D work, and I'm a painter. And uh, I primarily work from drawings, and he works from abstractly and figuratively, right? All kinds of ways. All kinds yeah. of stuff. Lifetime, lifetime stuff. So this is number 51. It's by Sarah May Salon. It's called Our Lady of Confinement, and she's being confined during this uh, plague thing that's going on and, uh, inside the box. Well, she's come down to talking to cats. <laughs> that's uh, long-term confinement then. Yeah, that's right. And then she's got gloves and on the outside of the box, and on the top of the box she's got masks. So she's talking about the COVID thing for sure. So she's yeah, making making art during He's moved time. on to 52. Okay, 52. 52 is by Raul Spiegel, and he just calls it the COVID party time. <laughs> it's a mask with a, you know, it's a mask. Yeah, it keeps you it safe and, and mysterious at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got a net, too. It's kind of sexy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go... Down here, it just says, number 53, 2020 Grow Box Project, Ebony and Ivory, by uh, da, Dan Lane. The heart in the middle, and there's two people. There's two figures, Figurative. Yeah. Figurative, yeah. And, and uh, woods, the exotic woods are covered with paint. Right, right. And the red on the inside is very tough. Yeah. It turn, must turn, it's on a turntable. Turn it. Yeah, it does. There you it go. Does. Gotcha. It's wood, huh? Yeah. Nice. And here it looks like one figure and it blends into two. Yeah. Alright. And then go up to number 54. And it's Gail Cohen Stein. And the title is It Is What It Is. <laughs> she says if the box evolved without any specific format or meaning. Perhaps living in such chaotic and unknown times, the box represents the unknown that we're all living in. She makes that pretty clear. Yeah, she and does. Yeah, yeah. She does, she does. You know, she's got collage. It's a pretty cool. Well, a lot of people are thrown yeah. for a loop by this yeah. coronavirus. Yeah, that hope was a lot. Look at this one, number 55. This is uh, Kate Merriman. It's called Rise. And uh, you can guess what this is about. The virus. Look at the little virus. So she made all the yeah, little oh, coronavirus is covering it. <laughs> it's pretty fits on wheels too. It moves around, so the virus moves. That's pretty neat. Little springs and those springs. So it says, please feel free to give the box a gentle nudge. <laughs> and I stalled the box on wheels because the motion of the virus is fun. Huh, because none of us is on steady footing now anyway. That's <laughs> Okay, so the next one is 56. Chuck Houdina, I think. It's Tupac. called Tupac. Yeah, a box for Tupac Shakur, Marin City native. But he made this because a friend of his, is a tribute to a friend of his who was killed by the police. And this is his tribute to a friend. So... It says, it says Mar Marin, what's it say? It says Marin, Marin City, City Matters. Matters. Marin City's Marin been Matters. in the news a lot. There's, it's quite quite yeah. political down yeah, there. Yeah, yes. Good thing to make a 
box yeah. on. Yeah. And then we go to number 57, and it doesn't say anything, but Matt Masson made it. It's called Stars. It's kind of like a balancing act. Look at that ball up there. Stars. And it's kind of like a like prison almost, too. Yeah, and it's kind of antiseptic inside, and then you got the eight ball. Nope, yeah. it's a four ball. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's stuck. It's a four ball. Huh. I think purple. Huh. Shades of Cornell. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people say the tribute to Cornell, to Cornell. Yeah. So then we go to number 58, and it's really straight out forward. This is Phil Jonick. It's called Frontline Medical Workers in the Time of COVID. And you can see what it's all about. The heroic workers. Well, it's kind of a tribute to the... Frontline medical, our heroes, yeah, wearing good yeah. hands. Wow. Well, that mirror box is neat and effective from there. Uh, we are in good hands. Frontline medical heroes, yep. our heroes. This, uh, yeah, that, that's really all current. This one here, number 59, this is called A Closer Look. It's by Jack Champy. And it's a, these are, the, he's um, symbolically using the rivets on the Golden Gate Bridge. These ah. are a few of the 600,000 rivets that hold together the Golden Gate Bridge. These are fingerprints of this magnificent structure. All right. I wonder, if the, I wonder if the color is accurate. <laughs> Iron oxide. <laughs> but I like having the explanation. I wouldn't have known. That. Iron oxide. That yeah. makes, makes it, deepens the meaning. It's kind of a conceptual. <laughs> this kind of, it's, here, number 60. This is Mela Delgado. It's called Allure 2020. She, she says, Allure is the quality of being powerfully and mysteriously attractive or fascinating. She wants to convey about a beautiful woman has these qualities, what, what we consider beauty, the kind of what a trap it is, the wounds that she does with. You know, on one side has words in, in uh, English, and on the other side the words in Spanish. I think they're the same word, beautiful, and, confident. And they're um, burnt in and yeah, scratched in, in like, yeah. it's a bit distressed. Yeah, that's the, that shows the distress. Because inside it's quite beautiful, that mirror inside, you know, reflected back and forth. Yeah. I wonder if the self portrait is. I'd be curious to know that actually, yeah. too. It's a beautiful it's face a in any event. It's a self portrait. It is a self portrait. Yeah, it's a beautiful face. This is Box 61 by Dennis Ludlow and Prantho Serino. It's a collaboration box. It's just very beautifully made. It's a game, which we don't know how to play it, but we, uh, we love it. It's about endangered animals. All in the world, and they made, made a beautiful pouch that it goes in, with a little elephant on the outside, and a, a, a booklet all about the endangered animals. How do you remember that? Thing? And a compass. You know where it's going. It said somewhere though, though it's a pretty important statement that when you draw something, you see it more clearly. Yeah. Where is that? It's in here somewhere. Yeah, I think that's a that statement. Yeah. That's so neat. Whatever we draw, we come to see more clearly and That's deeply. Amazing. And as drawing teachers, I say amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, so this is number 62. It's by Nick Potter. It's called Box in a Box. And there's all different types of wood in here. Um, natural woods, recycled woods, they're all from locally sourced, uh, sourced uh, stuff around the area. I love it. They have that bark on it. This one's really pretty. It is. Bark on it. And these are all different types of wood, and there's a legend to tell you what they are, and they're all by um, initial. A L is alder. B P is bishop pine. C H is cherry, and so forth on down That's the good. line. Really, really, a really nice piece. Yeah. Yeah. Like children's blocks too. And it reminds the, sh the shapes. I think are the same 
as the kids have for all uh, those kind of oh, blocks, yeah, yeah. the same yeah. uh, dimensions. Right. So this one is number 63, and it's by Geraldine Ganun. And she says, this is called Think Outside the Box, an idiom that hurts one to think creatively. In these troubled times, we need to be unafraid or try something different. And she's got these bottle caps, but then every once in a while, just turn one upside down. It's got kind of messy towards on them, you know. Uh, and most of them are beer, but they're not all beer. This is a, that's not a, I'm not I'm alcoholic in anyway. yeah. And it's a bot, useful box inside. Yeah. It's a heck of a lot, don't you? Okay. Beer, <laughs> beer tops. <laughs> well, this, this is, here is number 64. It's very interesting. This is by Shasha Higby, wonderful performance artist. It does a green box, and she works with sculpture and costumes and all different kinds of things. Uh, it's like a, it might sound like a Balinese uh, shadow puppets. So I guess you can hold story tell. And look at this box of puppets she's got over here. Oh my gosh. It goes on and on, these beautiful painted puppets. All different kinds. They are different characters, you know, so. Yeah, that's what sort of comes with all this. Huh. Shasha Higby's been the Western Marine artist. She's, she's great. For Ages and yeah, ages, yeah, and her performances are pretty magical. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they are very magical. So then this is on um, you know, 65 by Dave Benoit. So it's called um, The Ship in the Box, uh, The Ship in the Bottom Collector's Case. And the chair is the box, and he made the wood. It's from his mom's kitchen drawer remodel. This is hard to get. They turn it upside down. There's a whole bunch of stuff on the outside. Ah. All kinds of things. Yeah. And it's all, it's, it's pretty nostalgic. It's old looking stuff. It's yeah, yeah, Dave's a good craftsman. This one, number 66, is Josh Costa made. It's called The Dark Side of the Box. <laughs> and it comes apart. It's not really a box, it's a bunch of slabs of <laughs> acrylic colored acrylic here. Yeah. Quite, and very yeah. nicely made, and they all fit together until they form a box at the end. You got stripes on the edge. It's beautiful on the edge, the color of lines. The colors work there, so super. Super. Okay, so this is number 67, Diana Hammond. It's called Um Cajon Viejo, and it's a box drum. And it's got a hole in one side of the box and a, a, a sound hole, and it's got a snare on the inside. Kind of antique finish with the fouls. Nicely made that red line on the top. Okay. So this is uh, number 68 uh, by George Four. The low spark of high heeled boys. <laughs> huh. So he takes an interior world and look at the truth to my existence. I think that perspective floor is really pretty funny in there, the way it works on the sides of the box. The black and white check. I like the shadow under the swimmer. Me too. Me too. Me too. Uh, number 69. This is a box made by Loretta Farley. It's called Quan Yin, an everyday spirit box. She's inspired by Joseph Cornell and Judy Chicago. Judy Chicago's dinner party made her understand the value of craft. She's got abalone shell and all kinds of flowers. What kind of roses? It's quite Eastern. Yeah. This one I think is really quite beautiful. It's called Emergence. It's made by a couple, Gary and Linda Amari. It's called Emergence. 
as a metaphor for our shared experiences facing this terrible health crisis, and that we too will be able to emerge safely. It's just so beautifully made, these uh, butterflies are the, the way the shape of the origami shape or whatever have been drawn, painted all the different ones. Quite, quite elegant. That's a nice one. There's a flight. Shelley Rugg, number 71. Shelley Rugg. It's also in the midst of the pandemic and extreme social unrest with violence towards our citizens coming from our government. I find that there's a need to connect back to nature. So it's like stained glass, shards of twilight. That's an, I really like the red underpainting and the blue underneath that blue. Kind of got a red, red base on it. Make sure I see that. She says that the back of the box is brightly colored orange with a magenta trim. Very nice. Okay, so number 72. Number 72, Julia Levine and Steve Stombler. It's called Off Rope. Oh, it's kind of a rope on the side of the box. Maybe it's a root. Steve is a spelunker, and I was always trying case to be visually stunning. Our challenge was to try to recreate the magic inside of a box using acrylic resin, clay, homegrown rock, candy, and crystals. Well, the much of this box is made with inedible materials. Feel free to eat the stalactites if you find yourself hungry. <laughs> They're sugar. The stalactites are made out of sugar. Those little tiny figures give it a funny scale. The scale is funny. Yeah. I know there's one little figure at the top, so you can put them in the bushes. <laughs> Those are bats. Hmm. And then the next one is uh, number 73. Um, this is Kiln Farm Glass. She says that she uh, grew up in San Francisco in the 60s and attended the San Francisco Art Institute, and she'd been selling paintings. Um, she moved, this is an Airstream trailer, trailer named Desire that was my traveling studio from 2007 to 2018. That's good. She moved last year to the town of Sonoma and has been working in glass. She says, my abstract paintings and glass inform each other. Huh. It gives it a depth, doesn't it? Look at the way you can layer in that glass layer. We find out a studio like that. Airstream <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, down here, this is Vanya Bostrom, and it's a uh, Meditation number 74. So she's been meditating since the lockdown, and this is about that. Uh, I collect ideas for my next box. They come to me, I write them down in the notebook. This year was different. I started decorating the outside of the box without knowing what was going on inside. Then, as I'd hoped, a theme presented itself a theme of meditation, an area of calm surrounded by chaotic, chaotic everyday anxieties and fears. Really straightforward statement. Yes, yeah. I've heard it now, for sure. Okay, number 75 is Barry and Linda Linder of Japanese Kimono Dreams, a play of textile design. So she says, they just love saltwater boating. She loves saltwater boating, boating and uh, he, Barry, was an engineer for the New York Fashion Institute. And living in West Marin is like living in Long Island. So it's a kind of a cross between Japanese folk garments, textiles, boutique, embroidery, and, and fish, and all that kind of stuff that they love. They've been married for 38 years. <laughs> Pretty good. 